Welcome to the Mouthpiece. This is your fourth edition. You're here with Mike, your host with the most. And this week on the Mouthpiece, we're going to talk about Poker After Dark. I filmed a couple sessions this week. I'll let you know somewhat how it went, even though I won't give you any results. We're filming High Stakes Poker this Saturday, this Sunday. I'm looking forward to winning a half a million. God, let me please. And we will also talk about my hands of the week coming up on the Mouthpiece. Welcome back to the Mouthpiece. This is Mikey. How you doing, you guys? Well, we just got done filming Poker After Dark. 20,000 buy-in, six people. Winner take all, 120,000. I was in two of them. And, uh, well, didn't go so good for old Mikey. Um, the first one, I didn't feel so good, but I had a lot of fun. We had me, Phil Helmuth, Antonio Esfandieri, Phil Locke, Daniel Negrano, all we did is drink and laugh and make fun of each other. Oh, the Sheik was in there, too. I knew I was missing somebody. Um, it was tough for me to concentrate. I was having too much fun. So uh, look forward to seeing that uh, coming out on NBC, Poker After Dark. Uh, I'd love to tell you how things ended up, but uh, I'm not allowed. In episode two, Poker After Dark, it uh, was me and uh, Antonio Osfendieri again. Uh, Paul Wasica, Jamie Gold, uh, Alan Boston, and Mike Sexton. I came in very serious, no joking around. I played ex what I felt was extremely well. I thought I had a great feel for the table. I'm just giving you an insight of a bad day of play and a good day of play in filming Poker After Dark. I'd like to tell you what happened. I'll just say I suck. So, let's get into... The up and coming high stakes poker filming this Saturday and Sunday, where I plan to win a lot of money. High stakes poker kicks off this Saturday at the South Point as we get ready to play the biggest cash game in the world. The lineups are set. I'm set to play on Saturday. I'm first alternate on Sunday, and I hope I don't run out of Monday going into Sunday. I'm bringing 200000 with me on Saturday. There's a businessman that was wired 900000 into the account, his account, from what I was told, that's a lot of action and just loves to play and doesn't even care about money. Hope I get some. Uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of action. I'm really looking forward to this. I've been playing extremely well, I feel. Uh, hopefully things will go well. The last high stakes went really well. I think I was the biggest winner. The one before I would have done really well if I didn't get tired. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. So, as the filming comes out, all my fans out there, cross your fingers, do your prayers, hope I survive the weekend. And I'm ready to talk about a couple hands of the week. First, I want you all to know that it was a good week in online poker for Mikey. Uh, I found a way to actually have a, a really good week. Even though towards the end of the week I lost about 80000 um, I think I profited about 120 on the week, which is really my first decent winning week I've had in online poker in a long time. I thought I played really well, and I still thought I ran bad, but, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about a couple hands that came up. Um, this is one of the hands I thought I played really, really well, and one of the very good hands that I won. I'm going to talk about that one. I'm going to talk about another one in online poker this week that I lost, and I'm going to talk about a hand that came up on Poker After Dark. Hand number one, um, which I felt... Uh, was a one of the better hands I played in online in a long time. I raised it up with two nines. The flop come eight eight three. There was a limper under the gun, and um, the flop come eight eight three. And they checked to me. I bet, and the guy check raised me, and he check raised me about twelve hundred. Uh, I wasn't so that convinced he was that strong, uh, so I decided to call. Uh, the turn card comes to nine. I've got nines full of eights and uh, he bets about 5200 and I flat call him and the river comes like a four or some kind of blank and he shoves in for 13,500 and I call and he turns over the king four king four of hearts ladies and gentlemen if you think they don't give Mike the mouth action you tell me they don't if I ever catch cards I'm going to bury them I'm telling you that was a beautiful hand for about a $50,000 pot, let me tell you. Hand number two online, this is, uh, 
This is one that kind of sucked and I lost. Come a raise on the button. We're playing 4080 Deep Stack at Full Tilt Poker. Uh, it's a new game they just put in, these uh, Deep Stack games. Really good good to play because uh, you, could, you can see flops a lot and really outplay people or really, really, really put pressure on people uh, with Deep Stacks. Uh, the small one decided to call, 280. I had ace-king suited. I decided to re-raise the pot out of the big blind. Make it 1,200. The button folded. Now the small blind re-raises at 3,200. And it was a pretty quick re-raise. And I, and I really thought that he was trying to pick this pot up. I really didn't think he was that strong. And I really, I think I waited until it was like two bars left, but I really wanted to make sure I was right here. And I decided in my gut, I'm Mike Mattis, so he's trying, to, he's trying to just bully me here. And I just shoved in for another 7,600. And he insta-calls me. That's right, insta-calls me with ace-queen. Of course, the flop comes queen, 10, deuce, 4, 6. And out the door I went. He took the $26,000 pot. Poker after dark last night. Me and a hand, Jamie Gold played. I thought I played it extremely well, except for one street. And that one street cost me. It went blind, blind. I limped it with seven, eight of clubs. Jamie Gold limped right behind me. The flop come ace, king, ten. Big flop for me. It was a rainbow. Two blinds checked. I fired right on out at 1,200. Jamie calls. Blinds fold. Now, I know Jamie don't have that big a hand. He could have ace rag, but I'm putting him on like a jack 10, king queen 10, somewhere in that area, but not that strong. Turn card comes a blank. I'm like, you know what? Let's fire it. I fire 2,800. Jamie thinks. Jamie calls. So now I got about 12,500 left. So now I'm thinking to myself, well, he either flopped the nuts or he can't call a bet. But I don't think he flopped the nuts. But what do I have to bet to bet the right amount to win this pot? Or do I give it up? Well, not me, you know me, I'm a, I'm a bullet firer. And here's a mistake I made. And it's haunting me a lot because I was playing so well in this tournament last night. I bet 2,800 on the river. Now people will say, why'd you bet so much? There was 10,000 a pot, why I bet 2,800, why not bet? 57 or 100 or move in if you know he's weak. Well, if I overbet the pot, if I, I mean, if I bet move all in, he's going to think, well, I got nothing or I, I got the nuts. And now he's got a decision. If I bet a, a bet like a $2,900 or $3,000 pot bet and firing a third bullet after limping under the gun, there's really, if he's weak as I think he is, there's really nothing he can be. And I want to put him in a spot where it looks like I'm begging for a call. And uh, I bet the 2900 and he called me with ace-4, and I looked like an idiot when I flipped over 7-8. What did I do wrong? I should have bet 5600 on the river. He, wouldn't, he, he even said he wouldn't have called, okay? Personally speaking, he's an idiot. I think he shouldn't have called anyhow, but uh, actually I shouldn't say he's an idiot. I thought he played really, really well last night. But um, that's what really happened, and, uh, you know, you can get back your feed, feedback if you want to call next week on the show. Uh, and you can talk about uh, if you think I should have made a bigger bet on the river. Uh, I, I feel that uh, afterwards that I probably should have bet another 3,000. Um, I had him read right. I just screwed up. That was my mistake of the day, and that was what happened. We're ready to take your phone calls. Welcome to the mouthpiece. This is Mike. What can I do for you today? Hey, what's up, Mike? This is Black Mike from the series. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Hey, what's up, buddy? Ah, just hey. uh, hanging out, getting ready. All right, well, me and my buddies, uh, we're on our way down to uh, Sandia, New Mexico, because you know we're from Colorado. Yeah, 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 okay. All right, and uh, we're, you know, we're trying to get into this World Series. Anyway, we've been having this debate in the car, and maybe you can fix this for us. All right. All right, people, but the guys, the guys are riding down with, they like to raise out of the small blind, like, repeatedly. You know, you know when people are on the button? Uh-huh. People like to wait. They like to make the same play out of the small blind, and I'm telling them I think it's absolutely stupid because you're out of position. How do Absolutely, you feel about that? you're 100 percent right. Anytime anybody raises out of position is a complete idiot, especially when they're up against a good player. If I see somebody raising me out of position all the time, I flat call them with nothing every time. Then they bet the flop, I flat call them with nothing, and I'll take the pot. So when you're if, if you're flat, if you're raising out of position, you're just an idiot. All right. So now, so now my second question is. Like if you are if you are going to raise out of the small blind, what do you in, say? You've got six limpers, right? You're going to raise out of the small blind. You don't make this three time raise. What do you raise? Like five or six times the blind? 
Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, probably four times the blind. But I mean, I don't. If there's like a bunch of limpers. I don't. I don't believe in like oh, a bunch of limpers raise out of the blind and pick up the money. That's the stupidest thing in the world. That's what, everybody tries to do that now. And and uh, when you're up against no, no, good mean, players, uh, I mean, I limp. I limp behind two limpers with two aces and bury them. So no, you no, know. no, no, no. I mean, no. I mean, like you got six limpers in the pot, and you look down, you got ace, ace, or KK. And you, I would, wanna, you, know, you know what? I would probably make it a, a five times the blind out it with aces or kings because because now they think you might be trying to pick it up and uh, you might get somebody with two tens to, to to jump in. Okay, so so you'd make four to. Yeah, if you make it like three times a big blind there, they know you got a big hand. You know, you want you probably five times a big blind there if you have a big hand against a bunch of lumpers there. All right, all right. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Well, thanks Sweet. for the call, man. Call anytime. All right, we'll do, bro. Thanks. You got it, buddy. All right. Hello, uh, this is Mike. What can I do for you? Hey, Mike, this is Joe from Indiana. Hey, Joe. How you doing? Hey, I had a question for you. Go ahead. I just want to know about prop bets and what the wildest prop bet you've ever been a uh, part of. The wildest prop bet I've ever been a part of. Well, I don't know. I've, I lose a lot of weight loss bets a lot lately because I'm an idiot. Um, I made a, probably uh You want the wildest or the stupidest? Eh... Uh. I guess the stupidest. Well, the stupidest one I made was was, was with like, at the table I bet Howard Letter of five thousand that the Shawshank Redemption won Best Picture, and uh, it didn't that year. Um, uh, that uh, and uh, Doyle told me don't make that bet. I made that same bet and lost the prop bet, and I said no, 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 and I still made the bet after Doyle told me not to make a bet, and I paid five thousand. So that was probably the stupidest bet I ever made. Uh, probably I've really never done any wild ones really. I just make stupid ones and lose. Yeah. Uh, I know, like, Stu Unger's lost some big bets, you know, well, back in the day on the golf course. I didn't know if you had any bets like that. Yeah, well, they, they haven't been, they, I have enough problems. They haven't got me out to the golf course yet. If they ever get me out to the golf course, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I don't know what's worth, online poker or the golf course. It'll probably be close. Right. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks for the call, man. Take care. Thanks. All right. This is Mike. Welcome to the mouthpiece. What can I do for you? Hey, what's going on, Mike? Nothing. Who am I talking to? Uh, this is Jim. Hey, Jim, Houston. how you doing? Hey, I was just uh, wondering on you know, your thoughts on uh, side pots, like during tournament play, and because I know during tournament play they like to shake it down to knock the short stack off. But well, it, if it's what early in a tournament, uh, I don't check it down um, because uh, there's still a thousand people left. Who cares if you knock the guy out or whatever? If you if there's money in a side, if there's an extra five hundred in a side pot and the one guy's all in. Uh, you got to protect your hand if you think you got the other guy beat. So uh, I'll bet even if I think ace high is good there. But um, uh, when it gets down to the last uh, three, four tables, absolutely supposed to check it down at all times, especially if you have chips. Okay, and what about in, in cash games? How, like, how do you feel about that? In cash games, hey, you're, you're out. You're playing for yourself in cash games. I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't know why you would bet into an empty spot, side pot in a cash game. That would make no sense, you know. So. Uh, Unless you think the other guy's got nothing and you got both of them beat. Right. All right, man. Well, I was just wondering what you thought for. You got it, buddy. Thanks for calling, man. Take care. All right. Thanks, man. This is Mike. Uh, welcome to the mouthpiece. What can I do for you? Hi, Mike. This is Casey from Iowa City. Hey, um, Casey. How you doing, buddy? Doing pretty good. How about you? Uh, I'm just uh, hanging out, uh, talking to you. <laughs> good deal. I got a I got a pot limit question for you. You pot got it. Omaha. Um. A friend of mine is more of a pot limit player than I am. Okay. He uh, he likes to. I mean, he really plays tight and plays you know top sets and and straight you know top straights. Doesn't draw the third flush or second flush even very often. But um, he gets into a lot of spots where he'll sandbag somebody on the flop, and because it's not enough, the pot is too small. He gets sucked out on for for a bigger amount when they hit him yeah. a turn, and he doesn't feel like he can let it go. So. My question is, um, do you, are you a fan of like check calling with with the top set on the flop and if favorable favorable uh, cards? It comes? depends. Um, if it's been raised pre-flop and there's a lot of money in there, uh, and you don't want to play, and you think the guy's on a flush draw and you have a set, and all of a sudden the guy bets out, I don't think there's anything wrong with calling the flop, and then maybe he thinks you're on a draw, he bets the turn, you put them all in, and you get yourself where you're three and a half to one favorite with one pull at the deck. Uh, I like to play uh, big pots and pot limit on the turn more than I do on the flop. On the flop, where I, I'm, I'm a because most of the time when you put the money in on the flop and pot limit Omaha, you're really never more than sixty forty with almost anything. So if, if you get, a, him, if, yeah. yeah, if you want, if you get him to put the money in on the turn 
when you got the nuts. You're, you're, you're getting your money in three to one or better almost every time. All right. Thanks, man. You're very welcome, man. Thanks for calling. Good to hear from you. Keep you it too, up. Bud. Bye. Thanks. This is Mike. Welcome to the mouthpiece. Who am I talking to? Damien. Damien. What's going on, buddy? Not much. Uh, I was just wondering what, you're, what you think the best way is to start a bankroll. The best way is to start a bankroll. Like, uh, you mean like, I don't know. I've, I've ran 500 bucks into, uh, I'll give you an idea. Last week, uh, not well, last week, but three weeks ago, uh, I had $300 on my account online, and uh, in three days I had 75000 So I don't know. You just, uh, depends what you want to do. I mean, I'd, uh, I played one and $2 no limit. I played solid tight, double, double, got up to like 1000 jumped to like two four, and and uh, I was kind of like having a little bit of fun, and, and I ran it up yeah. to 75000 So, you know, it depends what uh, what you want to do. Uh, the thing is, is uh, if you're short on money and you only have a small amount, you don't want to take those kind of chances because uh, once you get a little bit going together, you don't want to go broke again. But uh, you know, me, yeah, I, I, know just, that is. I just go for it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like I play these, you know, smaller games, and you people buy them for twenty bucks, and you just you can only make one real good call, you know, and you get fucked real bad. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's um, you know, a lot of people say all the smaller games or whatever, these people never fold. But but I tell you, in the bigger games, they never fold. They just never fold. So it's just uh, about, uh, you know, having a little bit of fun, uh, you know, work, get yourself a little bit of money together, take a couple chances, and, uh, you know, hopefully you'll get a break or two and things will work out. All right. That works. Hey, thanks for calling, man. No problem. I appreciate you it. Got that it. helps a lot. You got it. Right. Welcome to the mouthpiece. This is Mike. Who am I talking to? Boosty J. Boosty! What's up, Boosty? Chon, chon. Chilling like a villain. What can I do for you today, sir? Eating some dinner. Eating Nothing some really dinner? at all. Just uh, calling you up. You're probably devastated from uh, losing zillions. Yeah, yeah, winning yeah. Zillions. Always devastated from losing zillions. Luckily, I have friends that yeah. uh, that are uh, pick me up off the street. Yeah, and yeah, I'm sure you love them. Yeah, I do love but, them. Uh, you got any uh, strategy questions you want to ask me today, Mr. Boosty JJ? Uh, hmm. Let's see. Why are you such a donk online? Why are you such a donk online, Mike? Oh, why am I such a donk online? Yeah. Good question. Good question. I well, mean, really, why do you lose all the time? Well, Is it rigged? Truly speaking, I, I don't lose all the time. And... And actually, I've been really doing a lot of analyzation of uh, why my online success has been not so well. Um, besides the fact that I do run worse than anybody, uh, I think I've got the kinks out of the armor, which is uh, the fact that uh, playing too many hours, uh, getting tired, and uh, not playing when the games are not so good. So, uh, and I gotta, I've decided if I take the high limit, short-handed limit games out, so don't play limit short-handed, because it limit shorthanded on lines, all luck, and uh, play when I'm not so tired, and uh, maybe run a little bit better. Things will be better. I mean, I, I personally think y you're great. Like especially, especially it was interesting. Like full ring, like you play like a knit. Like I don't, I don't know why people ever give you action. Uh, I like, get more action than anybody, and that's uh, you know that's good. You just can't. My biggest problem, I think, also is the fact that in my blood I want to steal, and I know when they're weak. And so I jump on them, and they still call me anyhow. And that's the only thing I, I need to uh, get out of myself online is to realize. But then all of a sudden I get in a live game, and then spots that are so easy to steal, I, I, I just, like, let the pot go, and I used to never do that. So, you know, I, I'm somewhere in between there. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, like, uh, for everyone listening, like, if Mike raises, just fold. you beat. Yeah, it's true. Easy. Well, thanks easy for the game. call, Boosty. Uh, I will uh, keep in touch with you, I hope, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, Mike, you talk to you later. later. Well, this concludes another episode of The Mouthpiece. The phone calls were great. I love hearing from all of you. Things are getting better. It's picking up. Remember the number, 1-877-675-1306. 1-877-675-1306. We're going to be taking your calls from 3 o'clock Pacific to 3.30 Pacific every Thursday here on The Mouthpiece. We might even stay an extra 10 or 15 minutes if you can't get your calls in. Every Thursday, here on the Mouthpiece, unless I'm out on town on a tournament, 
and you will know there will always be a recording to let you know that I am out of town on a tournament for that week on the mouthpiece. But if you look at the tournament schedules, you will know if we are going to have the mouthpiece. It will be here every week, 3 o'clock Pacific to 3.30. We're taking your phone calls, 1-877-675-1306. See you all later. Wish me luck on high-stakes poker. Thank you.